time to box in the rocker boxes. So I'm just gonna take a measurement here. It looks like two and a half inches at the widest spot. It's like about four and a half inches tall. That should be the same on both front and rear. Four and a half, two and a half. So I'm gonna go get the steel cut out for this. Now remember we do have a taper where we have an angle of the rocker box. So we're gonna have to actually end up cutting all of that out. And I'll show you how to do that really quick. It's very easy to do. Just simply mark it out and cut. So let me get these cut up and ready and then we'll get back to getting these welded in. All right, so these don't require any kind of fancy cutting, so I'm just going to go kind of assembly line style here. So achieving the correct angle on this is actually kind of a breeze. Um, basically what I do is I'll hold the uh, piece of sheet metal here. I'm going to hold it completely straight, and I'm going to keep this edge in line with, uh, with the rocker box itself. Now when pressed up against the lower section here, I can see the gap that I have up top here. So what I'm basically going to do is translate that and mark out, which in this case is about a half an inch, and mark that out on the bottom side on the inside. So when we take this line here, and run from the mark to the corner, I know exactly how much I have to cut out. And then we'll come back in here and place uh, place this again and then we'll cut out our notch and get this angle down here so that we can actually set our height correctly and, and uh, make the rocker box side here move around this hump in the sheet metal here. Okay, so it is safe to assume that both pieces are going to be exactly the same because they're servicing on both sides. So I'm going to make quick time out of this and stack the two of them together. Clamp that down. We'll double check on the edging here, make sure everything's good. We're going to cut all this off two pieces at the same time. Alright, we're actually pretty close on that one. Leaves enough with the edges here that we can fill all that in. So, I'm going to take a sharpie here. All right, pretty decent fit here. So what I'm gonna do is trace out this little hump section here that has to get cut out in order for the rocker box to actually get to the correct height here. So that should be enough, just, just this notch should be enough to get it to sit down correct. So with that little hump notched out of there, we get this as closely lined up as possible. It's actually a little tricky because we're just a tiny bit shy of Waiting edge to edge after after grinding, but shouldn't be that big of a deal. Just remember when you're welding uh, thicker steel to thinner steel, such as a an uh, eighth inch uh, rocker box panel to a you know, little tin chassis plate here, uh, stitch welding is a good technique there. Um, ensure that when the puddle builds up on the heavier gauge, you can kind of push the puddle or move it down into the sheet metal and you can watch it penetrate. As soon as that happens, move on or let off and keep stitching. Now the rear section doesn't have that little hump in it, uh, but I did have to take just a little bit here and create this little notch to go around the contour of the floor pan. So it fits beautifully. And I'm going to line this one up, drop a couple tacks of course, then we'll check it again. Looks like we're good to go on this one. Just gonna watch my electrical here. Alright, so the 
position of the rocker box here is right over that hole. So I usually just take a slug that is cut out from the hole saw. And we did the dimple dies for the rocker boxes and I'm just going to stick it right over that hole. And lay down a tack or two on it. All right, now we can fill all that in. So let's move on to the front here. These I actually pre-measured and cut them. They sit at about five inches tall, as opposed to the four and a half in the rear. So since I can't really get around to the back side and work, I'm just gonna trace this line, and that'll give you my angle. Now, if you'll notice here, there's a hole right through the middle of that, and I don't wanna really fill that in or slug that one. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, just kind of go around it. And I'll place the panel right about where I want it to go. I'll have just a little bit of this uh, little angle on it here. But I need to trace out the little hump in the floor. And this is definitely going to have to be trimmed back just a little bit. I already know that in order to uh, get this to drop down to the point where it's going to be because I don't need to fill in that giant gap. And then we'll cut a piece for the top here, a little triangular section, and we'll weld all that in. Now, since it wasn't uh, planned, obviously, in the beginning for this way, I had to take the seam sealer back a little bit and get rid of uh, the paint that was on there. So now we can tack this in. piece to get it filled in here. I'm just going to take some of my flat stock and I'm going to kind of loosely uh, yeah, kind of eyeball this here. About the size it needs to be. So from about right there to this corner here that should be that should be pretty close. It's going to have to take a little bit of uh, hammering and tweaking to get it in there but you know somewhere close cut that off stick it in there weld it up we'll be done. All right pretty decent fit. Let's buzz this guy on here real quick. Sometimes you gotta take the hammer to this to kind of tap it down a little bit, which I'm gonna have to do there. Which I'm gonna finish this up, get it all welded in, and then we move on to the best part, or one of my favorite parts about the build, and that's the gussets. So let me get this finished up and we'll move right along. <laughs> 